Hello and welcome to the next video in the fundamentals of Python series. Um, in this video, we're going to see a little bit on the advanced data type list. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Now, a list is a very useful data type in Python and you know, generally it's used in quite a few places. So let's see how we can define a simple one. We'll call or we'll define a simple list containing a few numeric values. So let me call this list as num list. And notice that a list is defined by square brackets. So any elements you put into the list would be you know, within these square brackets. And each element is comma separated within the list. So here I have a list with five numbers, uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And each of these elements is one of the basic data types. So you know you could have a list which is you know either a set of numbers you could have a you know list which is possibly a set of you know letters and alphabets and strings or you could also have a list which is a mixture of uh, you know all the data types so there is no rule as such as to what data type a list should have so you should you know, choose you know, what you need as per your requirement now an important piece to you know keep in mind is how to access different elements within this list. So let's say, for example, we are taking the number list. Let's just delete the rest for now. Now, each element in Python is assigned an index. And Python is known as a zero index language because the index of the list or index of any you know, data type for that matter starts from zero. So number one here is assigned an index of zero. Number two is assigned an index of one. Number three is assigned an index of two and you know, so on. So let's uh, do this uh, you know, with each other. And let's say we want to access the you know, number three in the list. So in order for me to access number three, we know that number three is at index two. So we can say num list, and I want to access index two from this list. So notice that I use the square brackets to access a particular element, and then I key in two, indicating that I need the number two from the list. So now I can go ahead and run these two statements, and then you'll see that as soon as this is run, I have retrieved the number three from the list. Similarly, I can retrieve, uh, you know, number four by keying in index three. And if I try to key in an index, uh, which is, which does not exist in the list, for example, five, it will give me an error saying, you know, the list index are afraid. So you'll know that uh, you have keyed in an index, which is not applicable to that particular list. Now, let's say I want to add or remove some elements from the list. And I want to do this uh, you know, dynamically. Now, adding an element is you know, relatively simple. So you know, the way you add an element to the list is to call the list. And then you call the append function. And you add whatever element you want to the list. So let's say I want to add you know, number 6 to the list. So I say numlist.append6. And I can print the list again to basically see whether it's added or not. So now you see that. You know, six has been added into the list. Now, similarly, if I want to remove an element from the list, I can call the pop function, and the pop function helps me remove an element from the list. Now, notice that as soon as I run the pop function, it automatically pops the last element from the list, which is you know the number six which we inserted, uh, you know, leaving behind all the other elements uh, as part of the list. So the pop function by default uh, removes the last element inserted or the last element of the list. Now, in case you want to remove some element from any part of the list, then you specify within the pop function which index you want to pop. So let's say, for example, we want to pop index number two. Then in that case, number three will be removed from the list and you will now be left with one, two, four, and five without the number three. So that's a little bit about the pop function. Now, lists uh, can be either a single one-dimensional list where you know you have a series of numbers. You could also have something known as nested lists. 
or subless. Now this is relatively useful when you have you know multiple categories in lists uh, or you want to segregate certain items uh, you know within a list and way to access these is uh, you know also relatively very straightforward so let's go ahead and have a quick look at that now let's say we want to define a simple sublist so let me say num sublist and within this uh, variable we are going to store a sublist and in the sublist we're going to just have two elements or two sublists which are basically a sublist with two elements one and two and another sublist with two elements three and four so notice now the way a sublist is written so you have an outer square bracket uh, you know signifying uh, the outer list and then you have the two inner lists they're signifying the sublist now, how do you access elements? It's similar to how we did that in this. Now, each element here is assigned an index. So, sublist number one is assigned an index zero. Sublist number two is assigned an index one. So, let's say I wanted to access, you know, this element three from within this sublist. So, let's say we want to access number three. So the first thing I'm going to try to get is I'm going to try to get this particular sublist. And how do I get that? I can just say num sub list of one because I know that this is the first element within the outer list. Now within this sublist itself, once I retrieve three comma four, I know that three is situated at the zeroth index of this sublist. So I can just key in zero here and Basically now what you're doing is you're pointing to the sublist first using you know this dimension and then you're pointing to the element within the sublist using this dimension. So once you run this, you'll notice that you get the number three retrieved from the sublist. Now one thing also to note with lists is you know lists are a data type which can be changed and you know the technical jargon often used for this is that lists are mutable uh, meaning they can be mutated or changed now if i show you a small example uh, you know let's just head back to numlist for a bit uh, if i let's say wanted to change the first index or the second element from 2 to 10 i can simply do numlist of index 1 is equal to 10 and then I can print num list again. So this will override the existing value and it will replace two with 10 in this case. So you should be very careful when working with lists because you know lists are a data type which can be changed by you know anyone. So uh, it's not something you would use to store very, very important information because it could be you know tampered with. That's uh, you know on a side note for you to keep in mind now the last function we're going to see as part of this uh, particular you know video uh, is a built-in function called len and this is particularly useful if you want to find out the length of a list so uh, let's say for example we have a simple number list with uh, some elements here right i'm just going to randomly key in some elements and I will assume that I don't know the length of this list. Right? So if I want to get the length of this list, then I can just say len of numlist. And this will extract the length of the list out for me and print it out on the console. So see, in this case, it tells me that there are 13 elements in this particular list. So it is useful in cases where lists are particularly long or you get in data from external sources and you can't you know physically eyeball and count the number of elements in the list so you know that's function one function for you to keep in mind which because it's going to be very useful in you know some of the further videos as well so that's it for you know the video of lists and a little bit of an introduction to what can be done using lists so stay tuned for the next video and in the next video, we'll explore a little bit more about lists and then move on to some of the other advanced data types. 
uh, you know, in case you have any questions on this video, you know, put them up in the comments and, you know, we'll answer those questions for you and, you know, like and share the video in case you feel that others can benefit and do subscribe to our channel. Stay safe.